everyone, April here. Welcome or welcome back to my channel where we explore all things Power Platform and M365. Today, I thought we would explore something called regex and how we can use that inside of our Power Apps applications to validate our fields and even to parse JSON and output that into a collection. There are so many use cases for regex with inside Power Apps, so I wanted to make sure to do a video about it, explain what regex is for those of you who might not be familiar, and show all of the different ways that we can use it to aid in our Power Apps development. I'll walk you through all of the details right after this. So what is regex? Well, regex stands for regular expressions. Regex has been used for years in all kinds of different programming language to help validate data and see if it matches a pattern. So all it really is is a sequence of characters that matches a search pattern. We've all used systems that have used regular expressions before. You ever signed up for an account and had to put in a username and password? And if you didn't enter in all of the password requirements, like the special characters and capitalizations and all of that, it popped up a message saying that your password does not match the requirements? That validation probably was done using regular expressions. Have you ever had to type in your email or a phone number in a form and had a message pop up if you entered any of those incorrectly? That again is another use case of regular expressions. There are a few basic things for how regular expressions are structured that I did want to cover just so when I show using some of these regular expressions inside of Power Apps, you can kind of see the patterns that are emerging and what characters we're using here. The first one is something called anchors. Our anchors and regular expressions are the upper caret and the dollar sign. If you use an upper caret in the word the in this example here, that's going to match any string that starts with the word the. Another example of these anchors are if we type in the word apps followed by a dollar sign. This would match any string that ends with the word apps. Next, we have something called quantifiers. These characters that we use for quantifiers are the asterisk, plus, question mark, and the squiggly brackets. So if we have the text ABC followed by a question mark, this is going to match the characters A and B and see if that is followed by zero or one characters of C. ABC asterisk, on the other hand, matches the string AB followed by zero or more C. So not just zero to one, it's zero or an endless amount of Cs. Then we can get even more specific. So if we're trying to match a pattern where it maybe is A, B, followed by two Cs, that's where we can use those squiggly brackets. So we can put in A, B, C, squiggly bracket two, and that will validate a string if it has A, B, followed by two Cs. And finally, we have character classes. These are backslash D, backslash W, backslash S, and the period. Backslash D validates if a single character is a digit. So if you're trying to validate a phone number, you would see this used in that regular expression because those would be digits and we wouldn't want to have any words or other characters in there. Backslash W matches a word character. So if we're validating an email address, all email addresses typically end in .com or .net, so we would probably use that backslash W to validate that that value contains a word in it. Backslash S matches a white space character. So if we want to make sure a string does or does not contain spaces, we can use that character class for that. And finally, the period allows us to match any character. So those are the high level basics. Now let's take a look at some examples of where we can use these regular expressions to validate inputs in our Power Apps. On this screen, I have three different text boxes. One where I want to enter a currency value, another where I want to enter a time value, and then one more where I want to enter in an email address. And you'll see below each of these, we have a label with the word false below. That's because I am using regular expressions to validate whether the text entered in each of these boxes is a valid currency, time, or email. And it's going to output a true or false value if that is valid or not. They're all blank right now, so it's false. But if I were to put in a currency value, say of $50, you notice that changes to true. If I were to put in a time for two o'clock, that also changes to true. And then if I put an email, that changes that to true as well. And as soon as I remove anything where it doesn't match the expression, like the dot for the dot com, that switches back to false, letting me know that's invalid. 
So let's take a look at what's going on behind the scenes and what regular expression I'm using to do this validation for each of these. Let's start with the currency value. I have a label here where I'm doing the validation. If we look at this label's text property, this is where I'm doing the regular expression validation. I'm using an if statement in a function with inside PowerOps called isMatch. isMatch allows us to pass in a regular expression like this, compare it to a label or text input or something like that in your Power App, and then output a true or false value if it matched that regular expression. The first input for the isMatch is to pass in the data that you're wanting to validate. So in my case for the currency, I have a text box called TB currency underscore one. Then we put a comma and then that's where we'll put the regular expression in to do the validation. If we look at what's going on here with the currency regular expression, what's the first thing we have? We have the upper caret. And if we remember from what we just talked about, the upper caret will match any string that starts with whatever follows it. In the case of this currency validation, we're trying to match on US currency. So all currency values should start with a dollar sign. You'll notice the backslash D next. We're using that to validate that what comes after the dollar sign is a digit. So using the same logic you see at the end, we have a backslash period. That's going to make sure that we have that period to validate the cents portion of the currency value and that that value following the period at the end is going to be two digits. And we can go into each of these text properties for the different regular expressions, say here for time, and we can see those similar patterns for validating a time field as well as validating an email. And the cool thing about all this is a lot of these samples that I just shared with you are available on GitHub where you can just copy and paste the formulas and you don't have to worry about remembering all of this and writing all of this regular expression from scratch. If you go to aka.ms forward slash power platform hyphen samples, you'll be taken to the power platform samples repo. So if you want to use that regular expression to validate currency, just do a search in here for currency and you'll see this sample posted by Gita that has an is currency function which has that regular expression built into it. So all you have to do is copy and paste that into your Power App to start using it. The next thing that I want to show you though is something really interesting that came up when I was helping someone with a Power App they were working on. They wanted to be able to take a block of JSON and parse that natively in Power Apps into a collection. There could be many use cases to this. Maybe you're pulling in data from Power Automate and passing that into your app and that data is stored in JSON. Or maybe you're outputting a block of JSON into a field in your database, or that's a SharePoint list, Dataverse, Excel, whatever it might be, and storing that data as a block of JSON. And you want to be able to loop through that and have that outputted into a collection. This is another thing where we can actually use regular expressions to do this parsing and outputting into a collection. So I wanted to make sure that I showed you an example of how this can be done. Let's start by looking at the sample JSON that I'll be using to showcase this. This block of JSON, as you see, is really simple. And the first thing I wanna point out is this regular expression approach is probably only best for those simple JSON scenarios. Once you start having super nested JSON, the regex for this will get a little bit tricky and ugly. But for the simple scenarios like we're seeing here, this is actually a good approach. So for this JSON, I have two properties, one called path and one called name that I'm defining for each object. In my case, this actually holds a list of items in SharePoint for documents. So I'll have the path of that document in SharePoint along with the display name of the document. Now, if we look, the regex for this is actually pretty straightforward. We're going to validate that the JSON starts with a squiggly bracket. Then we're going to match on each of the JSON properties here that we have, path and name. So I'm going to make sure that there is a string called path followed by a colon. Then I'm going to ensure that whatever follows that is in quotes. And then I really don't care what is in there. So I'm allowing for all different types of characters, words, and special characters and all of that to be inside of that property for the JSON. Then you'll just do a comma and you'll do the same thing for the next property. So you'll have the name of the property in quotes, colon, and then the name of the property again in square brackets, allowing for any type of data to be stored in that. So how this works in the Power App, if we go back to that, I have that same block of JSON stored here in a label inside my Power App. And what we're seeing on the right here is actually that JSON transformed into a collection and surfaced up into a gallery in our app. 
all that I had to do to take this JSON here stored in a label and output that to a collection is I added in a button in this case to parse the JSON. And if we look at the on select of the button, you'll see I'm using the clear collect, which allows us to create a local collection within inside of Power Apps. So I'm creating a new collection called var parse JSON. We're using that same match all function and we're going to pass in where that JSON is stored in our app, which in my case is in another variable called var JSON. And then we'll just put that regular expression there to do the match. So this will actually take and loop through and match all of that and parse that out into a local collection. So just to show you that worked, I added a clear button, which is going to clear out that collection. So I'm going to press the parse JSON button again that has that regex within it. And as soon as I do, you see that is populated here in the gallery. And the gallery's items property is pointed to that var parse JSON collection that we just created. So hopefully this taught you a little bit about regex and gave you some ideas of how you can use it with inside of your Power Apps applications to help with validation and even things like parsing JSON. If you found this video helpful, please click that thumbs up button and give it a like and I'll catch you in the next video.